That Arnold Schwarzenegger in trouble sound. Hey everybody, sim racing red person is back. Sorry I had to endure my last video with the song engines. Oh my god. A bit more serious today. Sometimes. Sometimes I feel acquainted to Jeremy Clarkson. We're both very young, very lean, and we also share the ability for pure genius. My genius today is a cross card, which is a bit of a mad vehicle as you're seeing. A little bit mad. I'll try to explain it while going sideways. First things first, my shifter is on the left, I know. I'm doing a lead with oh, BPCC cars, 90s. And I'm driving the Vectra with Bailey and uh, some friends of Jimmy. And the Vectra has the shifter on the left and push you upshift. So, I'm just doing that now. But a while ago I saw an article that Cardcraft, which is probably a pretty good card sim, added a cross card or something. Car, cross, cross card, this thing. So, I didn't know about these vehicles at all. It's a, a big sim actually, not knowing about them. So I saw a video of an absolute mad, super narrow hill climb type event. I'll link it in below, you gotta see it, you absolutely have to see it. Mind was blown. But the videos of the car in Cardcraft looked very sedate and perhaps... Oh, oh, wrong way. I cannot judge the physics of that game without trying it but it seemed to be very sedated and if there's one thing that's not sedated it's a, cro a cross card like this oh it's very much not sedated at all very lively so i went to work for about i think four hours three hours not a lot of time and i am in sim racing heaven right now so i made a decided to make a video about it so these have motorbike engines in this case about 130 horsepower and they weigh about 400 kilos including the driver makes them quite nippy And they're on fairly sticky tires, so we're pulling well over a G. 1.3, 1.4 perhaps. So it's very grippy, very responsive. But very soft suspension and a lot of body roll. Oh, we can almost loop it there, yeah. And I think that just looks cool. You can see it in the hill climb video as well. Lots of suspension travel. It's also a bit of weirdness in that video. Watch it now and oh, there will be an exam on what the weirdness is. Oh. But you can really see that, you know, the suspension moving. Lots of sideways action. Amazing little cars. So it was worth doing a video about that because it's really cool. Oh, that's just too hot. <laughs> The steering is uh, very direct. And the front wheels turn quite sharp, so you have plenty of opposite lock to catch. Big slides, but it also moves around in the braking. But it, when taking some care, it doesn't really turn around on you. And it's just a lovely balancing act. Over the limit everywhere
on the brakes, off the brakes, and it's not that scary. Well, I have looked it once or twice, but it's a lot of opposite lock available, and the overall setup of the thing just seems to encourage you to be a complete hooligan. There, locking the tire sideways into the turn, and all fine. See that stage of direction is lightning fast, and that's with a soft suspension as well. So the weight transfer takes a little bit of time. So it's a little bit of a weird mix of a soft suspension and an otherwise of an, a firecracker. It looks a bit like a firecracker. I think that's a video title there. Firecracker on steroids. So big thanks to moderate, the French moderate race department, who I contacted because he's making a very nice model of this for AC. And I wanted to get the 3D model, see if I can convert it and do a private video or whatever in the future. And he said, you know what, I actually have a mod for RF1 as well, which is easy to convert, at least to make get it working and he, he drove these things himself so it's a really cool example of modding where a guy driving these things in real life with a bit of handiwork with uh, 3d studio and everything gets the stuff in there and I have to give a big compliment because the graphics models look nice in my opinion but the sounds I did tweak them a bit this does give me that motorbike engine vibe A very solid mod to begin with uh, from a graphics and audio perspective but of course the physics is what uh, what interests me and it seems that I've managed I don't know how to get that madness in this what is a madness engine AMS 2 is the madness engine that should be very suitable for these cars So big thanks to uh, for the permission uh, to convert this car and use it, and hopefully you're enjoying the sliding. Super direct steering, and the force feedback is so nice. It is so direct. You don't really want to do more than suggest little changes to what the force back is doing. You don't want to take command of the wheel most of the time. Get a feel for what, what it is telling you and then just correct it a little bit. And then you can be smooth as well. Ish. This is, well... Is this smooth? Probably not, but smooth-ish, because you can sort of learn how to trust the car and trust the force back. Oh, that's so far. Yeah, that's on the limit. Uh, we have some on the steer. It is not impossible. You can affect the handling with a stiffer rear suspension, for example, will give me a bit more oversteer. Stiffer front will give me a bit less oversteer. But overall, this is a very controllable uh, little thing now. don't really have data for it. I just went with my gut feeling and I used my tire spreadsheet. Because these are small 10-inch tires. Never really done those, I don't think. So I just use my uh, complicated tire spreadsheet that predicts the properties and I just enter the properties and this is a one-to-one -on, one -one immediate deployment of those tires. So I spend 12 seconds on the tires entering the numbers, that's it. And it works, well actually a little bit more, I changed the curves a little bit, but make it two minutes work on the tires. And we get just something that seems to work quite well. And again, I don't own this car, I don't have data for the car, but 
Oh, as far as just the silliness of them goes, it seems to be pretty good. Uh, this is what I sort of expected the videos of Cardcraft to look like. Madness, but it takes physics and driving skill. <laughs> yes, I possess qualities that nobody possesses. I'm very modest. Uh, no, but of course you have to... The physics should allow it, but you should also get it out of the physics. And given my full-time occupation is doing silly things in this physics engine, after only 14 years of messing about, I probably am somewhat skilled. Nope, not a, not a gear shifting there, but somewhat skilled at going sideways. But it is relatively easy to do. See, on the with the load on the no on the nose there, <laughs> load on the nose, it's turned in nicely. But yeah, got to be somewhat available there to uh, do something about it when things go wrong. I didn't there. The trick is, of course, now, you can go very sideways. But what is the quickest way? Not on the grass, that's for sure. I think limiting the slides a little bit might help. Uh, just a little, just a little. 108. Oh, I've looked at the time and... You can understeer, that's the evidence. I don't think we'll see much of it. But oh, gee, that's so snappy. If this thing weighs nothing, has no inertia, boom, boom, and goes like that. It doesn't spin you out, though. That's so cool, because it's this used to be so difficult to do with modding in R-Factor with lots of years ago, and there wasn't as much data about, and we were sort of learning how the engine worked, how cars worked. This would have been impossible now and now if it's just the correct tools like the tires that took a couple of minutes and the spreadsheet tools that enable uh, like make a suspension that works roughly like the one on these cars uh, motorbike engines now you can get some data some torque curves and then in just a few hours you're sort of wait a minute eight years ago this was probably impossible in uh, in most sims anyway and now it's sort of one afternoon I'm sure there's plenty wrong with it. I think the oversteer might be a bit, bit much, a bit easy to to generate. Understeer is, uh, I think, more possible. But then, and if you look at the hill climb video, some really low speeds, sometimes anyway. So I realize I might might come across a bit cocky here, but it's just. A lot of enjoyment, but not I'm not saying this is per perfect. It just so, sort of brings that ferocity across that I missed in the card craft videos. The, that sideways braking, and then just get off. Oh. Oh yes. Ah, that's pretty wide. 
You saw the big slide and my delta went positive as my slip angle was off the chart. Ah, nice. Let's see if we can do one semi clean lap. So much, it's so cool. Oh, first gear, wrong gear, still negative, not anymore. It can be tempting to go with past experience and think, okay, my skill and the sim car so far mean that if I go this sideways on the brakes into the turn, I'll die. You have to sort of stop that thought and just put your trust in Firecracker. <laughs> it often is fine. Anyway, before ending this video in a dramatically terrible way, there's one more thing, if you look closely here, here's the question that I was going to ask you. Look closely at the video that I linked to in the description. Watch the rear tires, they sort of wobble, they point out. So I think in order to increase the turn-in of that car, we don't really need that actually, because we have plenty of balance. But perhaps they did a little trick to the suspension geometry. And that could be the educational part of the video where if the body rolls if the suspension moves up so these are the rear tires so we're driving like that when the suspension moves up the tires toe out so they start to steer so when i turn right like that the outside tire turns and then you get sort of a uh, forklift steering at the back it seems to do that look at the video look at the rear ax axle when viewing the car from behind we can do that in the sim, so <laughs> how will that feel? Let's, uh, let's give that a brief go. Here we are again. I have not done this with the, re the most recent version with the suspension and, uh, and everything with the other parameters, so <laughs> given that it's already quite oversteery, I think this might be quite deadly. It's going to be a very weird sensation because we all know toe in and toe out and if you do toe out at the back it will be unstable, but this is sort of body roll dependent forklift steering firecracker body rush yeah yeah that's it that's it right that will feel quite weird because as we start to steer as we get a bit of g-force the rear wants to forklift on me so let's see you see the difference I'm having to do a lot less, a lot less steering, because effectively we have rear steering now. I will need a couple laps to see if I can get used to that, but.
the positive side if the suspension moves down so when I brake the rear moves up a little bit then we get some toe in so it should be more stable if that is desirable or not I don't know but it's more stable than braking but when the suspension compresses we get that forklift steering and it's got sort of a weird over steer as a function of g-force it's so cool it, this is so nice that remember that this isn't some AMS magic or thing you can only find in ACC or RF2 or iRacing Terence, the physics programmer of ISI back in the day already had this suspension stuff I think in F1 challenge oh that's that's a challenge so that's 21 years ago and it might have been in sports car GT already I'm not sure so that's suspension geometry I just changed the link in the suspension and now we get that bump steer behavior and we seem to get roughly an idea of that video that by now you should have watched 10 times of that floaty back end from the bump, bump steer now let's see if it's quicker let's do a couple of laps see if we can beat that time a little bit more lively there's a little it's sort of more neutral steering because the, the oversteer the sliding the steering comes from the rear axle now takes a bit of concentration I think I was negative. Oh, that's uh, really cool. It feels quite different with the forklift steering. Who would have thought? I think it might do quite well if perhaps this car is a little bit more oversteery without it already, so it doesn't need it as much. But it would be possibly a nice way to make it a little bit more oversteery in case you needed it. I'm not quite as at home with it yet. Do a 
couple more laps. Sideways, nope. I'm negative now, though. Yeah, no, not anymore, but nah, no, definitely not. Of course, my lap with the normal suspension was not ideal, so cannot really compare, but it feels nicely different, and uh, I don't think uh, you want this sort of forklift steering on your Formula One car, but. That's a nice combination of turns there. So much fun. thing when it comes to lap time. Oh, first gear, we don't want to be first gear. Ah. Oh man, what a bunch of fun. So, I, I'm not sure, perhaps like AC has a perfect mod for this and I was just not aware, but I haven't seen this thing being as maniac as I am driving it today in a sim yet, but I also haven't been looking. So point, you know, do this below, where to find the better version. It's very oversteery, you know, front rear tire grip, suspension setup, uh, things can change there, obviously, grip levels are sort of a guess, everything is a guess, but still, you know, that ferocity, that, uh, that Arnold Schwarzenegger in trouble sound, great. I hope you enjoyed that guys, this was Firecracker on steroids with a motorbike engine with wonky suspension. Do watch that video in the description because it's just amazing and then spend at least, if you are anything like me, a few hours watching cross card videos on YouTube, but that's time well spent. Thanks for watching guys, I'm um, yeah, a bit different, I hope you enjoyed this, bye bye.